Common question, wheel spacer, should I get them, should I not get them? Get them on the rear, get them on the front. A lot of questions to answer and there's no one size fits all solution. You know, a long time ago, Bora, a wheel spacer manufacturer was our sponsor for good reason because these tractors, all these compact tractors are just, they're narrow this way, they're long, they have a high center of gravity. Look how high that seat is way up here. And this tractor has spacers on it. I think they're three inch, two and a half or three inch spacers on here. So it's, it's widening it out five or six inches and it looks more stable because of that. That's not much, right? But it makes a big difference. And so my opinion differs, I think, with Bora and probably other spacer manufacturers as well. I would personally only start out with the rear axle. I would not worry about the front axle. I'll tell you why in a minute, but this, this rear axle here is a rigid piece, right? On the front, you know, if, you ever, if you've ever lifted your bucket or pushed your bucket down on the ground and lifted your front axle up, um, that's a good way to actually check to see if your four wheel drive is working. And if you've ever gone shopping for a used tractor, do that, do exactly that. Put the bucket on the ground, raise the front tires off the ground, make sure it's in four wheel drive, and then see if those front tires are spinning or not. That's a, a simple trick to know if it's working or not. But why I mention that is because with that bucket pushing the axle off the ground, you can go to one side or the other and just push on that front axle and it's gonna swing up and down, left or right, all right? It's a pivoting axle. And so the rear axle, there's no doing that. It's, it's rigid the whole way across. And so if you're on a hill or anything like that, your tractor's not pivoting on the backside. It is on the front, but not on the back, all right? And so that's where you're gonna have the biggest impact with spacers and widening that, that stability and that footprint is, is back here on a rigid axle when there's nothing pivoting anyways. All right, so did exactly that right here so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see, well, it's not level, right? That kind of, that side over there is, is hanging down. Look at that, moves around, okay? And so that's kind of my point. If you put wheel spacers on here or not, the front of your tractor is still gonna tip and angle side to side like that. It's this rear axle that does not do that. And so that's where you're getting the bulk of your stability is back here. Front axles are generally pretty small on tractors anyways. And if you're gonna have an axle seal leak, which is probably one of the top three most common things that happen on tractors, it's gonna be on the front axle, not the rear. And that's because these front axles, they deal with the steering, they deal with the loader with heavy loads, they're smaller, and so they have a lot of stress put on them already. And I think if you're putting wheel spacers on here, you're just introducing an extra component and an already, fairly weak area of the tractor. And so it's a double whammy, right? It's not doing, it's not having the same effect as wheel spacers on the back. And it's introducing additional stress up front that could lead to even more premature axle seal issues. So a few more things about wheel spacers. You know, if you put them on the front of your tractor, you gotta pay attention if you have a drive over mower deck as well, that your alignment is still gonna line up with the ramps and not be running over any of the other brackets or components, bars, levers, whatever springs that are on there. So pay attention to that. Also, whether it's front or rear, if you have a belly mower, you gotta be aware that you're not hitting all the gauge wheel arms and the gauge wheel brackets that are on the outside of the mower deck, there's gonna be interference points. And a company like Bora can tell you um, they've sold so many of them, they know what size spacers to put on your tractor. Don't ask me, because I don't really know, but ask Bora, they can tell you. And so we did put, and this was just kind of because I wanted to see what it was like, we put the biggest spacers that Bora had on our 4720 um, two or three years ago, whenever it was, just to see what would happen. We put six inch spacers on there, widen it by a foot, all right, on just the, the rear axle. And so, an issue that you could have with that, if you have a, a tracking concern, is that your rear wheels then are substantially wider than the fronts, all right? And so if you're doing certain rows or certain types of work or projects where you want the front tires and the rear tires to track in line with one another, well, that could be a reason to add on spacers, even if you're not doing it for the additional stability, maybe you're just doing it for you know, another reason like that. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. Now, as far as warranty on your tractor, that is gonna be dealer dependent and you're gonna get a different answer depending on your dealer. You will have certain dealers that will buy and install spacers on your tractor. You'll have other dealers that say it voids the warranty. And I have time and time and time again when I do these videos asked for, for these dealers to send me the language that says that this voids the warranty. And it's such a gray area that there's just, there's just murkiness, right? And so I think what it comes down to is just prioritizing things and your own purchase, right? With your own tractor, your own situation. And I don't think you can place a higher value than on your own life. You're not gonna, you shouldn't value the, the equipment more than your life. And we do safety videos a lot and talk about all the rollovers that happen. This stuff happens, it's still, I mean, it's almost daily that somebody somewhere in the world is rolling over on a tractor and dying and being crushed. It's terrible, so you do not wanna prioritize the longevity of your tractor, even if, even if a spacer does shorten the axle life. Most compact tractor owners put 100 hours or less a year on their tractor. These things just aren't seeing much use. And so by the time that, this is subjective, all right, this is just my opinion, but I think the amount of time it would take for any issues to pop up is, is pretty darn low. While an accident can happen in the first hour on your tractor, the second hour, the 10th hour, the 50th hour, the 100th hour, the 500th hour, whatever it is. So you're getting safety from day one when you add those spacers on there greatly improving your odds of getting home safe at night versus the slim chance of having an issue with an axle. And the one last kind of big deal I think that is worth mentioning is attachment width, all right? Some attachments, it doesn't really matter, you know, and if you're going from like on the 1025R that we have back there went from the, the stock 48 inch, we added two inch spacers, it's 52 inches. Still use 48 inch attachments on there like a tiller or a brush hog and you really don't notice a difference. But if we would have put six inch spacers and, and got to five foot wide and using four foot attachments, that's when it becomes an issue. And, and don't forget about the front end loader attachments as well. So if you really widen the footprint on the backside and you're using a smaller like a snow pusher or a, a smaller snow plow or even your bucket, um, you're not gonna cover the width of the pass that you have like pushing snow, for example. And so that could be an annoyance, right? You're trying to clear your snow, but half your tire is packing down the outside That's that the pusher or the plow is not picking up in front. And so you wanna be aware of those kinds of things and you still have limitations on the size of pusher you can put on there, the size of snow plow blade you can use and work effectively with your certain size of tractor. So. Long story short, I would go with one and a half to three inch spacers on the backside. Incredible difference that that makes in stability. It seems insignificant, but it does the trick. It's gonna minimize the amount of stress you're adding to the axle. It's not gonna really affect the attachment sizes and, and issues with that. It's not gonna way offset the, the tracking between the front and the rear tires. And so I think that's a really good range to kind of stick with, in my own opinion, based on what I've used. Um, over the years. So there you have it folks, some additional information on wheel spacers for you. There are quite a few manufacturers out there. Be aware, they're not all made to fit tractors. Some of them have to be machined off when you get them. So it's worth asking the question to whoever you're gonna buy them from to make sure they're a, a mate, a perfect mate or match right to your wheel hub. And now while we don't sell wheel spacers, we do want you to be safe on your tractor, and so when you're looking for a tractor attachment to do more work or more projects, whether it's for the front end loader or the three-point hitch, we'd love to help you out and earn your business. We ship tractor attachments nationwide every day of the week, so check us out at goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.